there's been a lot of talk about the Affordable Care Act. And being in your role, I assume you have an opinion. I was wondering if you had unequivocal control, would you um, eliminate the program and go back to what we had before? Would you modify what we have? And if so, how would you modify it? Or would you do something completely different? And what might that look like? How's that for an easy question? If I had that answer, I might be president right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to back up a minute and just, uh, I, I'll, I'm going to answer your question, but I want to back up a minute and say that, quite frankly, we can't afford the health care system we have. Okay, as a country, as employers, we cannot afford the current state. 18 going on 19% of the GDP, the gross domestic product, is taken up by health care. And so, you know, everything I'm, I'm going to say is apolitical. This is not a Republican or Democrat. There is nothing political about this. This is... You know, this is what we're facing as an industry. I say we can't afford it for a couple reasons. I'll give you a couple anecdotes, and then I'll, I'll get into the politics of it. If you were to take the world's economies and rank them from largest to smallest, entire world economies, and you took U.S. healthcare as its own country, the world's economies would go something like this. United States, China, U.S. healthcare, Germany. You think we're spending a lot on healthcare in this country? We'd be the third largest economy in the world. The other thing is, our businesses can't afford the, the healthcare that we're expending right now. Well, I won't ask for a raise of hands, but if you drive an American car, what do you think the number one raw material in that car is? Steel, I heard, right? Number one raw material in an American-made car is health care. $1,600 of every American-made car is health care. Foreign car, $200. The number one raw material in a foreign car is steel. Now, I'm not saying we want a health care system like foreign countries have, but how can our businesses be competitive like that? So, getting a little more directly to your question, the, the Affordable Care Act initially was a very good thing from the standpoint of it got more people coverage. And in my business, more people having coverage is a very good thing. They get access to the health care they need. They don't put off those decisions unnecessarily. And they're able to get those routine services. It also, part of the Affordable Care Act, really focused on quality metrics and driving changes in quality. And that really forced the health care industry to step up our game on quality. And I think that was a very good thing that was part of the Affordable Care Act. Now, on the flip side, those people that got coverage, most of those came with five and $10,000 deductibles. So those, you know, really didn't help a whole lot. It went from charity care to bad debt because most people don't have five or $10,000 sitting around in the mattress. The other piece of the Affordable Care Act was the exchange market didn't work exactly as planned, meaning we got some adverse selection. All the sick people who needed to utilize services signed up. The young, healthy people who were to balance out that pool didn't sign up as, uh, in greater numbers as once thought. And so that led to the premiums ratcheting up very quickly because of that adverse selection, which is now making the Affordable Care Act and the exchange products less and less affordable for the people who, who need them most. So with that said, yes, something needs to change. The system we have in general, as well as the Affordable Care Act, has not really fixed health care. It was, it was real, really insurance reform, not health care reform. The American Health Care Act really was not health care reform either. It is really focused, if you look at it, on tax cuts and budget cuts, not on universal coverage. Not right or wrong, but that was really more the intent of, of that that bill. It focused mostly on Medicaid reform and the exchange. And so um, would it have resolved some of the issues that we have with the Affordable Care Act? Maybe some, definitely not some. And so what I think we need in, in our industry is to ensure we have the most people covered that we can so that they have access to the care and services that they need not our emergency department. That is not 
It's the best place to get your care, your primary care or anything else, so they can get that preventative care. We need to, in a bipartisan way and with all healthcare, physicians, hospitals, all parts of the healthcare industry sitting at the table, come up with meaningful reform so that we can really, truly bend that cost curve and change the way we deliver health care in this country. And that is going to be a very tough dialogue. It's a question we've not been able to answer. You know, at the root of it, is health care a right or a privilege? Uh, and so I think we've got a long, difficult conversation ahead of us on health care. But I absolutely believe it needs to change and we need to deliver higher quality at a lower cost that can be affordable in this country. With that, we have to look at personal accountability, tort reform, other aspects that unnecessarily drive up the cost of health care and create defensive medicine. So that's my view on the politics of health care. So when it, uh, when it, When ACA was implemented seven years ago, what are some examples of like what actually changed at the hospital directly because of it? Uh, so we, we had a noticeable increase in the number of folks covered by insurance in our, even in our own community. And so they were able to get a doctor, have a primary care doctor. Uh, because if you don't have insurance, it's difficult to get a primary care doctor. I mean, they, they do a lot of charity work, but it's not like practices are just trying to sign up um, all the charity patients they can. So they had that coverage. They were able to access care. We saw a shift. Historically, a lot of those patients would have been charity care patients. And so we saw our charity care numbers start to dip a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then we saw our bad debt numbers outpace the reduction in charity care because of those copays and deductibles uh, being so high. So now they're accessing the care. They're getting the care they need. And quite frankly, it's a bit confusing with all of the regulations and bureaucracy. People didn't quite understand they were responsible for the first five or $10,000. They thought they had health insurance. And you know, when you get the reality of owing five or $10,000, it's like not having insurance. And so we saw that change. So what we started to implement were some different ways to work with those patients. How do we... Um, create some, some opportunities to do a prompt pay discount, to be able to write some things off. But at the same time, we're a business. How do we work with them to collect and maybe set up a payment plan or do something that's more reasonable? Uh, we do not go after people's houses. We do not go after their assets. We don't uh, do those kind of practices. So how can we work with them so that they can get the care they need but not be bankrupt in doing it?